Hi guys, we're back at Smash Fishing. This is the first of the uh, abalone tide. It started 12 o'clock yesterday. So we're gonna head out tonight and hopefully find some shrimps for the net and hopefully get a couple of abalone as well. So stay tuned, I've got the cooker and stuff with me, which I'll have a little feast later on. So hopefully we do well. It's Smash Fishing, woo! We've got an absolutely killer foraging tide tonight. I've got my Orma bag. I don't carry buckets with me when I'm ormering because you always end up knocking it over. <laughs> Lots of logworm on the beach at the moment. It's always good to see. Cass absolutely everywhere. We're at our destination now, which is a big gully with a lot of boulders in. Uh, the Ormers, they feed on the kelp and stuff. And they sort of migrate around the rocks, eating all the algae, all the kelp, all the different sorts of seaweeds. And they work their way up the beaches, under the rocks, but never to a too high level. So I'm going to work my way down with the tide. If I don't get anything here, I'm going to jump over the rocks and try the next one. So hopefully we can get some. I've got the hook with me today, got my gauges. So hopefully we can get some good stuff. Woo! What we're doing to find the abalone is a lot of the time, maybe under the big rocks. I need two hands for that one. <laughs> Which is just lifting up the rocks, checking around. Nice pie cross crab there. Evil little buggers these. <laughs> All sorts of winkles on the rocks. No ormers yet. An ormer is just a giant snail. Well, it's definitely the biggest snail I think we get in the Channel Islands. And a good point with this is uh, I think it's really key is put your rocks back. If you lift up a rock, just drop it back in the same place. Otherwise you start killing the environment. A dead crab there. It's been munched up by something. <laughs> Let's get him. Come on, you Ormers. Little pie cross there. Nothing under that one. Quite a hard game, this. And if you find so, you can you, you can really find some big shrimps around here. Hence the reason I bought the net. It doesn't look like anyone's been here in a while, so I'm gonna start flipping these boulders, and hopefully we can find our first green orma or abalone. A lovely looking sea urchin there. We got broadclaw porcelain crabs. I'm not really sure what that is. Must be some sort of. Uh... Oh, I've just sat in the water. <laughs> I'm wet now. They're lovely to see the diversity of life on these rocks. That right there is exactly what we're after tonight. That's the green orma or abalone. And this one you can see it's got all his little whiskers out and this one's way too small so uh, a good bit of advice is don't take them off the rock uh, until you've measured them because if you break the uh, foot on it and it won't stick back to the rocks so essentially they just die and these have to be eight centimeters to keep that was a nice size cushion star there awesome good thing about nighttime foraging is uh you can spot things really well with the head torches so it makes your life a little bit easier anything under there nice big anemone there a few more cushion stars i'm not seeing much lady crabs and stuff yet there's still tap it's a cool looking pie cross there it's purple i've never seen one this color before i've just spotted a little baby abalone right there. Diddy little things they are. Finding a lot of small stuff. Uh, a few stones out here have been turned already, so it's gonna be tricky tonight. Quite a nice sized brown crab. Not definitely not big enough for me to keep and eat. Awesome looking creatures, and these things have got a serious nip. Good example of an orma there size of that for a pie crust claw on that thing so what i've got is a little gauge here where you go from end to end of the orma 
And as you can see, this one's not in. But good to see them like that. I'm just going to make a little causeway here. Drop the rock back carefully. It's always good to look after the little ones. That's our future. And all I'm doing is just working my way around the rocks. There's a slip of limpet there. This rock ball here looks like it hasn't been touched. The thing with this place is uh, not a huge amount of people put the rocks back. There's a little squat lobster down there. And uh, it just wrecks it for the next, for the next year. There's all the baby ones on top. That's a nice grab. Nice old shanker there. Get yeah, all the babies and the uh, all the starfish, the little eggs. Get out of the way. Well, uh, they'll all die. So, a bit irresponsible, the people that don't flip the rocks back. But hey ho, like you just gotta look for a bit that doesn't look like it's been turned. Because you'll see the rocks will go white on top. So, I'm just gonna work my way through this area. And hopefully, it hasn't been hammered too much. It's a really tiny little warmer there. <laughs> Lovely colours on the little baby ones. And once again, I've just dunked my backside in the water. <laughs> That's what it's all about, Ormoran. You just gotta get stuck in. You can see here, guys, I found a little puddle and it was high up the beach as well. There's two Ormors on it. I don't know if you can see that. You can see his little antenna coming out. They actually move quite quick, the Ormers. It's really surprising. And this one here looks good. Yeah, that's a keeper armor there. So what I do is I've got a, a tapered part on my hook that goes under the armor. And then you gotta pop it off. That's one keeper armor, I'll just double check. And look at that. That's about three millimeters in. This one's definitely too small. So I'm gonna move this rock here. Hopefully there's some more under it. And then I'll get all these back. Hell yeah. First all, my baby. And these are great eating. That's a bargain. Definitely got something to eat now. And what I'll do when I cook ormas on the beach, I always keep the shells just in case the uh, authorities want to check what I've been catching. So they don't think that I've uh, kept anything undersized. Another orma here. I don't think it's going to go in. Nah, she's out. But look at the colours on that thing. They got blue, green, purple, pink, all sorts. Awesome snails they are. Some interesting creatures in here. That there, if it just wants to slow down a little bit. Come in. And these are actually really good to eat when they're big enough. Come here. I don't want to. I don't want to grab him with the sand. I don't want to take his slime off. But this here is a rockling. Sort of looks like a catfish. And they don't grow very big, but they, uh, when they sort of get to the half pound mark, these are really delicious fried. But we don't want this today, so it can go free. Cool little creature that though. And they go in and in amongst all the rocks, feeding on all the prawns. Some big pie crust down there. Come on, you abalone. Definitely keeps you fit, this. <laughs> oh, such a lovely night. The moonlight is so bright. I can walk around without my head torch easily. Some sort of sea squirt there. I think that's what they are. Big ones too. We've got a baby abalone. Lots of the broad claw porcelain crabs. Got a nasty little nip on these things as well. I've come to a really high up rock pool just to have a little mooch around because no one's been here in years. And it's great that I've just found a little baby one. So I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to search the rest of this rock pool. It's quite a big rock pool. Here is a Cornish clingfish or Cornish suckerfish. they got lovely blue pattern on their head. And they stick to you. Oh, I, won't, I won't bother him again. Awesome little creatures. Baby abalone there. There is absolutely tons of these around at the moment. 
but just not finding the monsters yet but all of this lot looks like it hasn't been touched by anyone so let's go this little vicious thing here velvet swimming crab you see the red eyes and they actually do feel like velvet on the back as well we call them uh, lady crabs here because they got an attitude <laughs> he's always nice to find this here is a squat lobster very small one they don't grow huge they're awesome little creatures they're nippy little things as well <laughs> Oh, a lovely size wrasse here. Look at the collars on that thing. <laughs> awesome. Found a little pool here. Hoping to find some in. Some nice sized rocks. And what you're looking for is the rocks with the kelp around them. Because that's what the uh, that's what the abalone will be feeding on. Hopefully they're in here. There's a really small one there. And he's got a tiny little baby next to it shows the diversity we have over here and that's why it's always important to put your rocks back making sure you don't crush any of the uh, ormas because that in a couple of years those will be legal size so it's always good to preserve it the amount of ormas this sort of size I've found it's great to see and I'm finding some some rocks I've pulled up about three or four on but just no big ones. I think the uh, the other lads have been round here. So I'm not expecting anything special. Uh, hey ho. The brown crab there. Brown crab. Or shanker. Something really satisfying about being out at night time on the beach. You see all sorts of stuff that you just usually wouldn't. I'm trying one more spot now and then uh, I think I'll give it a rest I've got the one the one Orma I don't think I'll cook that tonight I haven't got enough to cook so this will be a short coastal foraging trip got a boo-boo <laughs> the thing with barnacles and uh, sea urchins and stuff that's under the rocks uh, they do cut you so if you want to wear gloves it's always good to I never do that's why I bring a medical kit, baby. Thought I'd give you guys a little show. Here we've got dog whelks, and these are all different sorts of snails that we've got around Guernsey. This is obviously the biggest, the orma, and this is not a huge orma either. This one's about three mil over the limit. And we've got limpets, winkles, periwinkles, all sorts of different snails, and they're all edible, but they don't all taste good. <laughs> winkles, these ones especially, when they're nice and big, they are absolutely delicious. And another Orma here. A bit of good measure. Oh, that one's out by probably two millimeters. That's one very lucky Orma, very pretty Orma. This one's very high up the beach, uh, sort of in a sandy gully, but you don't usually find them in here. So I'm just gonna have a little mooch about, see if I can find anything cool. And we're off home, baby. So that's all for today's episode, guys. Got one Orma, found an absolute ton of them, but just not many big ones. Where's it gone? There we go. So that's the green uh, green Orma or abalone. It's in the mollusk family. Mollusk family, sorry. Yeah, great little creatures they are. And this is borderline on the limit. So this is about three mil over. But they don't grow very big, these. They grow to about six inches and that's it. The shell gets very soft and they die after that. So it's quite interesting, because I know in other parts of the world, you get the really massive things, but we don't get those. We get these green ormas. If you look them up, quite pretty, quite a pretty snail, I must admit. They've got pinks, purples, greens on them. Hence the name, green orma. <laughs> So I'll leave this one in the fridge tonight, and then we're out tomorrow. So hopefully we can get some. So if you like my channel, like and subscribe. There's going to be plenty more to come, guys. Hopefully we can do a little bit better tomorrow. It's smash fishing. Woo!